Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall, and today we are making finger puppets. I'm kicking myself for not making 10 of them though, because look how cute these are. All nine of these finger puppets are available for free on my website, carlyhall.com. So you can go over there and grab the file and follow along on this tutorial, and I'll show you how to make one of them start to finish. The process is the same for all of the different animals. So I'm just gonna make one, and then you'll be set to make all of them. And if you wanna make just the piggies or just the chickens, you can choose which ones you wanna make and replicate them. So I'll show you how to do that in Design Space. I'll also walk through all of the materials you need, but let's get started because these are super fun to make. I think I might make another set just for fun. All right, let's get started with our materials. For this project, you will need a ton of different colors of felt, but I tried to consolidate them so that the faces are all the same cream. So these four have the same color face. The pinks are the same on the chicken and the pig. And you can see that all of their faces have the same black iron on. So I did my best to consolidate them. You could even do the fox and the tiger the same color if you want to have one less color of felt. But I just wanted to say that if you want to make a all, there are a lot of colors that you'll need. I bought my felt on Amazon and it was a value pack. And these are all the colors I used and I'll list out the colors in the description so that you have an idea of what colors you will need if you wanna make them exactly like I did. In addition to felt, you'll also need black iron-on for the faces, so black iron-on or heat transfer vinyl, and um, we'll use an easy press mini to apply ours, but you can use an iron heat press or easy press to apply the cute little faces onto the front of your finger puppets. To attach all the felt, I used Fabri-Tac from Beacon, and I have never tried this before, but I was so impressed with the permanent adhesive. It dries quick and it's really permanent, so I definitely recommend this Fabri-Tac. And then you'll also need embroidery floss. So I got a huge variety because I wasn't sure what colors I wanted to use, but you do not need all these colors. You actually only need eight colors of embroidery floss. And again, I'll put those in the description below as well. But I bought this at Michael's and I used a 50% off coupon. So it was only $9.99 for 100. So this will go a long way for future projects. But again, I'll put the colors that you need in the description below. Some additional tools, a pair of scissors, your embroidery needle. This is a two inch needle and it is sharp on the end. So that's important because we're going through three layers of felt. So you will want a sharp needle with a pretty good size eye because we're using two strands of embroidery floss. And then just a weeding tool to weed your iron on and your iron on or HTV. They're the same, but I still am conditioned to say iron on even though most people call it HTV. So, Iron on HDB, you'll weed it with your weeding tool or the pin pen. This is from 651 Vinyl and it's a life changer. It's a tiny little pin so that you can weed your HTV. All right, that's everything. Now let's look at the file in Design Space. Once you've opened Design Space, we are going to bring in the file from my blog. So to start, you're gonna head over to carlyhall.com, download that file, and then once it's downloaded, you're going to upload it by choosing Upload and the upload image option. I have an entire video on how to do this, so I will link that in the description below if you have any issues uploading it. You'll upload it and then save it, and then it'll appear in your recently uploaded images. Click on that file to insert it into your canvas, and you're good to go. If you wanna cut all of the animals just like this, they are already resized for you and are the perfect size for your finger, but if you want to make them a little bit bigger or do a test cut, you're more than welcome to cut one out of cardstock or even felt and test it out and then resize as necessary. If you wanna make them all, click Make It, and Cricut will automatically split them up amongst all of the different colors. So you can see here's my white felt, my black iron-on faces, so these are all the little faces for our finger puppets, and then all of the colors. So there's 11 mats total, 10 felt colors and one iron-on HTV layer. So after you're ready to go, um, you'll just wanna mirror this and continue on. I only wanna cut one today, so I'm gonna cancel out of that. And then you'll see that each of the puppets have their own group on the layers panel. So we're gonna ungroup it. And if I select just the bear, the bear is all grouped together and ready to go. 
So I can choose whichever animals I'd like to cut and delete away the ones that I don't need to cut. So for today, I'm just going to cut the tiger. And so we're just gonna leave him there. And then you'll see that he has a face and a front and a back of the puppet, puppet as well as that ironed on detail. So we're gonna click make it. Don't forget to mirror your iron on HTV layers. It does make a slight difference. So you'll wanna make sure to mirror that. And then we'll cut the yellow felt and there's those three little pieces. So you can see that you don't need much material for this project at all. We're gonna continue on and we'll start by cutting our felt first. So we're going to browse all materials and search felt. I found that I like the first setting just fine. I will tweak it a little bit, but you can play around with all of these different options and see the different tools that Cricut recommends. But I'm gonna choose this felt option and then click done. Now Cricut recommends the fine point blade, but I actually prefer the rotary blade. So we're gonna click this edit tools button right here. And I'm gonna choose the rotary blade and click apply. Load your felt onto your fabric grip mat and then we'll load that into the machine to cut it. From the machine side, you'll load the mat into the machine and just make sure that your felt is adhered all the way and load that in. Once your button flashes, go ahead and click that. Once it's done cutting, unload your machine and you can see just how easily that rotary blade cuts through the felt. No fraying, no dragging. Like the fine point blade, it's perfectly cut every single time. Before you start your iron on cut, make sure that you take out your rotary blade and replace it with your fine point blade and switch your material setting in design space. I cut my iron on last, so I did all of my felt for all of my animals and then I cut my iron on. So in design space, you'll wanna make sure that your mirror is turned on. And then up here, you also wanna make sure to turn that to iron on. I like the everyday iron on setting, but if you have a different setting that you like, you can use that depending on the iron on or HTV that you are using. This is a great project for your scraps. You can just grab a scrap of your black HTV, shiny side down on your mat, and then we will get cutting. Once your iron on is done cutting, I like to weed on my mat. I'm using my pin pen just to grab the corner and then this iron on HTV weeds so easily. And there you go, here's our cute little tiger face. So now we are ready to assemble using our HCV and felt and embroidery floss. So our little body, this is how we are going to assemble it. There's a front and a back and a face. And I am going to use my Fabri-Tac to glue the face on first. So I'm just going to take a small little bead of Fabri-Tac and just go around the edges. I'm not gonna cover the entire thing because it does, you can see through it a little bit, it's not terribly noticeable, but I am just going to do a small little bead around the edges. It doesn't take much to adhere this. So once you have it on the edges, we're just going to stick it on either one of the layers that has the finger position as well. And then just slide it into place to make sure it's all aligned. And the reason that I gave you these little extra face pieces is so there's a little bit of a dimension and differenti differentiation from the body. So you don't need that extra face piece, but I think it adds a little bit of interest to have that little extra ledge there. Next, we're gonna take the adhesive and run it along the edges of the finger puppet this way. So again, just a small bead goes a long way. And if you are using embroidery um, floss, you really don't need much because your embroidery floss will also hold the edges together. And the order of operations here doesn't really matter. If you want to do your iron on first, you can. I just like to assemble everything, slide it all in place, 
and then do my ironing. If you're using a heat press, I would recommend that you do the little faces first so it's nice and flat. But since I'm using an Easy Press Mini, it does not matter. So now that I have my finger puppet, don't stick your finger in there yet. It does take a little bit of time for it to dry, but I'm just going around and pinching all of the edges so that it's nice and secure. And you can see the three layers on the side, two layers here, three there. And then I'm gonna put his face on. I have an Easy Press mat and my Easy Press Mini. For my Easy Press Mini, I'm just going to heat it up to the second level. If you're using an iron or an Easy Press or a heat press, follow the instructions based on your iron on and the material you're pressing it onto, so felt. So you'll want probably a little bit lower than you expect, just because you don't wanna melt your felt. Now I'm just being picky and lining up his little stripes along the edges. So again, for my Easy Press Mini, I'm using the second level of heat, and then this is Caesar Iron-On HTV, and this is felt, polyester felt, so I'm just going to press it for about seven seconds and it will stick on there. But again, your settings will depend on the type of HTV, heat transfer vinyl, and the material that you are pressing onto. Once your Easy Press is ready to go, we'll just rub it around on top. For the Easy Press Mini, you actually can move it around while you're using it. And I'm just counting, well, not really because I'm talking, but you usually would just count until you have it on there for about seven seconds for this material. It doesn't take much, and then I'm going to peel it while it's still warm, and you can see that it just peels off perfectly. And here is my little finger puppet. Now, I could be done at this step here because I used the adhesive, and it's probably already dry now too. And you can just open it up and stick your finger in, and you could be done right at this step. So you do not need to use embroidery floss if you don't want to. But if you want to add some extra detailing, you can use a blanket stitch and stitch around. And I will show you my technique, which is definitely not a professional embroidery technique, but it will help you kind of start and finish your embroidery. So that is this one here. And I just wanted to give you some tips on my other ones. So for anything that had felt um, little decorations, I just use the Beacon Fabri-Tac to adhere those and then after I adhered those, I used my Easy Press Mini on the nose and the eyes. So a lot of them have little extra felt pieces. For the pig and the chicken, I actually did their faces, then embroidered around the entire edge, and then did the little ears and little head piece after the fact. So that's adhered with just the Fabri-Tac after I did the embroidery. So there was a couple of things that I learned along the way. This is exactly like the tiger, more felt pieces. Here's my cute tiger. And for the embroidery, I just went right over that iron-on, didn't even worry about going over it. So just some little tips and tricks. All right, let's get started with the embroidery. Okay, now we're on the fun part of embroidery. And I have a piece of embroidery floss that is 48 inches long. Now this is longer than we'll need but I want to give you plenty of leeway in case there's any mistakes. So I've already used two strands of the six strand embroidery floss, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the strands and you'll see six of them. And you'll, let's, you'll grab one of them and pull down the other strands. So it'll look like it's kind of knotting up, but don't worry, you'll just keep on pulling until you're all the way at the end. And then you'll be able to straighten this piece back out and repeat to grab one more strand. So if you're using six strand embroidery floss, then you can make three puppets out of each one. And if it gets kind of caught up, just smooth it out and keep on pulling. So once you have your two strands pulled out, you'll grab each one of those and you'll find the ends and pair them up and smooth them out together so that now you have a piece of embroidery floss that is two strands thick. On one end, you'll make a knot. So I just like to do a triple knot. A single knot will pull through, 
and the double knot will also pull through. And you can see I have a nice big knot at the end of my strand and I'm just gonna trim it down so that I have a little end. On the other end of your thread, you'll wanna trim down the two threads together and then you'll thread your needle and just make sure that both threads go through that needle and give yourself a good amount of tail from your needle, but do not knot it. It'll just kind of hang through there. So we have our tail and our needle threaded with a triple knot on the end. Okay, so now our needle is all ready to start stitching our cute little animal puppet. So we're gonna open up our animal puppet so that the knot is hidden inside. So I just kind of peeled back this edge so you could see, but you don't actually need to peel it back this far. You'll just wanna pierce through the back layer with your needle going down. And then when you're pulling your thread through, you'll just wanna use your other hand to kind of guide the thread so that you don't get your thread all knotted up because that is the only tricky part when you're starting out with this much embroidery floss is keeping it nice and smooth so that it doesn't get knotted up. And you'll see that my triple knot doesn't go through. It's inside my puppet and it's hidden when the puppet's closed. So now we're going to start stitching and we'll stitch from the front to the back. And you'll just wanna decide how far in you want your stitches to be. So my stitches are not very far in and you'll just pull that through both layers of your puppet. And right before you get to the very end, so there's a little loop, you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna come up that loop. And again, just making sure that your thread doesn't knot when you're pulling it through. So there's our first stitch. Now we're always gonna come from the front to the back. So we're gonna go, we're gonna space our stitches out and we're gonna go the same distance in. We're just going to push that through back to the back and pull it right through our finger puppet. And again, just making sure that your thread doesn't knot up when you're pulling it through. In the beginning, you're working with a lot of thread, so it does get easier as you continue on because you're working with less thread. So now I'm right where I am about to loop through. So I'm gonna take my needle and from the direction that your stitch was in, you're gonna come up that loop again. And that is going to create a blanket stitch. I'll show you what that looks like as we continue on. So we're gonna keep on going. Now we're on our third stitch here. We're just gonna try to keep it the same distance. And right before our loop is too tight, again, coming from the direction of your stitches, we'll pull this through. So now this is our first one that you can really see, but on the edges, your thread will follow the edges. So you'll just continue that same stitching pattern all the way around. And even over your HTV iron-on material, you'll just pierce right through it. So we'll just continue on stitching until we are all the way done. So you've finished your last stitch and you have no more stitching to do. Instead of just tying it and having the knot on the outside, we're going to follow our stitch into a double stitch. And I'm just going to go right through that hole, but only through the first layer. So same stitch length. I'm just gonna pull it through to the inside so that my thread is on the inside of that first layer. Then you can just make a knot so you can see on the front, I have a little bit of a double stitch right here so that my knot ends up on the inside. And then I'll just trim off my thread and tuck that in. My stitches are not perfect, but it's perfect for a finger puppet. 
And you can see that my finger can slide up in there. And I'm good to go for my finger puppet. And this is what the back looks like. And here's the front again. Here is our final finger puppet, this little tiger. I think it turned out so cute and relatively easy to put together. The most time consuming effort is the stitching. But like I mentioned, if you're using Beacon's Fabri-Tac, you actually don't need to stitch at all. You can be done right after you glue. If you're looking for any of the products used in today's tutorial, underneath this video, there is a video description where you can find links to all of the products I used. And thank you in advance for shopping through those links because by clicking on those and shopping through them, I may earn a small commission and that directly supports my business. So I really appreciate your, your support in shopping through those links. In the description, you will also find links to all of my social media, including a link to my Facebook group, Cricut Crafts with Carly Hall, which I'd love to have you there because you can ask all of the Cricut questions and we're all there to help each other learn our Cricut machines. So check that out if you're on Facebook. And if not, find me on other social media platforms so that we can be friends and connect all across the internet. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one.